Hello, this is Information Service Engineering, lecture number two, Natural Language Processing, part two. In this part of the lecture, we are going to discuss about the last one of uh, last part of language model and engrams. So in the previous part of the lecture, we explained what is maximum likelihood uh, estimation, which is the way to evaluate, uh, to compute uh, the probabilities for n-grams. And uh, the definition here is that a maximum likelihood estimation is a method of estimating the parameters of a statistical model given observations by finding the parameter values that maximize the likelihood of making the observations for given parameters. So the maximum likelihood estimation for parameters of n-gram models is computed by normalizing counts from a corpus. And this is the equation that uh, tells us how to compute uh, these uh, parameters. So for, uh, if we want to compute the conditional probability of a word w sub n, given that the word w sub n minus 1 uh, is already there, in the end we, what we have to do is uh, to count uh, how many times this specific big gram, meaning the word w sub n minus 1 and the word w sub n, they come together, divided or normalized to the counts of just the word w uh, sub n minus 1 in the corpus that we have. But let's see now in a real example how we behave and how we compute all those things. So we have this uh, example corpus of three sentences in this case. Uh, the sentences are, I saw the boy, uh, the man is working, I walked in the street. And the vocabulary that we have for this experiment consists of the words I saw the boy, man is working, walked in street. So what we do first is we bucket each sentence by special start and end symbols, the symbols that you see here, the S and the close S for every sentence. Then what we have to do is to count the frequency of each n-gram. So you will see here that uh, the uh, big gram of uh, starting S and I, it appears only once, while the big gram of I and so again appears only once. And then the step is to normalize uh, to get the probability, uh, as we saw, so to compute the maximum likelihood estimation, where this is called uh, the relative frequency estimate process. But this is the abstract process. Let's have a closer look now. So first, what we should do is to compute the unigrams uh, in the corpus. So in our corpus here, this is the table with the counts of the unigrams we have, which means how many times each word appears in our corpus. Then we have also to compute the big gram uh, counts. And here you see we have a two dimensions uh, table uh, for the big grams where we see all the combinations that we have, combinations for the words. So what we see here, what we can tell is that the words boy and boy, they never come. Uh, one after the other in our corpus, uh, while the word the boy, uh, this big gram exists once, as well as the big gram of walked in. This also uh, happened once in our corpus. So let's uh, say that we used our corpus and we trained our uh, model. And now we want to estimate the maximum likelihood estimation for a new sentence. So it's a test case, let's say now. So the new sentence says that I saw the man. So it is similar to one of the sentences we had, but that one was I saw the boy. Now we have a new sentence says that I saw the man. So how we proceed? We split it into big grams and we try, want to compute or estimate the probability of each big gram using the ma maximum likelihood estimation. And we see that we, the first big gram we have is the word I, given that the starting character comes before it and then so given that I comes before it and then the conditional probability of the given that so comes before it and last is the word man given that the comes before it. And then we uh, transform it to the formula of the maximum likelihood estimation with the counts of the big grams and unigrams and in the end uh, if we do the math we end up having the probability of 1 divided to 9 for this new uh, sentence. Uh, but what would happen if there is a sentence, now we have to evaluate, which contains a word that is a known word. So it's a word that we don't have in our vocabulary. For example, here we have the sentence, I saw the girl. 
the word girl doesn't exist in our vocabulary, so it's an unknown word for us. And here we have two assumptions we can follow. The first one is called closed vocabulary assumption. And according to that, the test set can contain only words from our vocabulary. But there is also the open vocabulary assumption, where according to this assumption, the, te the test set can contain unknown words, meaning that words that they are not part of our vocabulary, and they are abbreviated with OOV, which means out of vocabulary words. So let's see uh, how we would proceed in an open vocabulary scenario, in an open vocabulary uh, system. So here in an open vocabulary system, any unknown word as modeled by adding the pseudo word UNK, as you can see, like unknown. So how do we proceed? Uh, one way to proceed is by first choosing a fixed vocabulary, then uh, convert in the training set any unknown word to the vocabulary into this U and K, train our model, and then in the test set again convert any unknown word uh, into U and K, and last estimate the probabilities of U and K like we do for any other like regular word in our vocabulary. Another way to do that, an alternative, is not to choose a fixed vocabulary in the beginning, but turn every first occurrence of a word type in the training set into this UNK. And let's see how we generally, generally evaluate. So the most common way to evaluate is by dividing the corpus into two parts, which is the training set and the test set. So then we build a language model, which can be a big gram, trigram, or the model uh, we decide uh, from uh, the training set. So we train on the training set our model, which of course means that first we have to compute all the counts of the words, the frequencies of the words, uh, etc. And then estimate the probability of the test set this time. This procedure, uh, so and in the end, calculate the average uh, branching factor for a test set. But what does this actually mean? So the, uh, the branching factor of a language is the number of possible next words that can follow any word. So how many words are likely to follow a specific uh, sentence? Uh, and a good language model, of course, should be able to minimize these numbers. Of course, not to have an, an infinite set of words that can follow a sentence, but a, a rather small set. This is usually done by giving higher probability to the words that occur in real texts. The average br branching factor now is referred to usually as perplexity and denoted by two capital P and is the most common uh, evaluation metric for uh, n-gram language models. So perplexity is a measurement of how well a probability distribution or a probability model uh, predicts a sample. And uh, let's see. So the goal here in perplexity is to give higher probability to frequent text. Uh, so therefore, we want to minimize the perplexity for frequent texts. So, uh, the probability of the perplexity uh, comes by computing the probability of each word in a, in a set, in a test uh, set, uh, normalized to the size, to the number of the words in a set, as you see. So, if we do the math here, we end up in the last equation, which is uh, the equation for the perplexity of uh, a sequence of words. And what I want you to uh, get from this uh, equation is that perplexity and the probability of, of the words are inverse. There is an inverse relation between them. So the higher the probability of a word is, the lower the perplexity, which means the better model we have to predict a word, then uh, the perplexity gets smaller here. And let's see this in a, uh, with a real numbers. So we have the Wall Street Journal, which contains almost 2,000 words. Uh, they, it has a vocabulary of 2,000 uh, words. And we have a training set here of uh, uh, 38 million words and a test set of 1.5 million words. So if we do the math using the perplexity equation we saw in the previous slide, uh, we, we end up with perplexity for unigram being 962, while for bigram is 170 and trigram 109. 
so exactly what we expected. So the better the model performs, the uh, smaller the perplexity of the model gets. So we saw up to now what happens when we have uh, unseen words in our vocabulary. But what happens when we have unknown engrams, actually? So let's say that we have again the same corpus. I saw the boy, the man is working, and I walked in the street. And in the test set, we have a sentence which says, I saw the man in the street. So what do we do? Again, the same procedures we split into uh, big grams, uh, and we want to compute the maximum likelihood estimation for each of those in n grams. So at some point, we see that there is an n-gram here, which is the one uh, of the, with the condition probability n given man, which is unseen for our uh, training corpus. We haven't uh, made this n-gram in our training corpus. OK, but what this actually mean? So let's see. So if we continue and uh, try to estimate the MLE of this specific sentence, you will see we end up there with a zero. That is because there is zero times we saw the specific engram in our test corpus. So in the end, we are going to end up with a zero probability for this specific sentence, which is, yeah, it, it's not the best case scenario. And actually, this is a real problem. So it is a problem that it happens because for example, if we consider that the Shakespeare corpus consists uh, of uh, 884,000 word tokens and uh, there is a vocabulary of almost 30,000 uh, words, word types there, we see that we, this vocabulary has only 30,000 word types, while the possible uh, words that we can have in a dictionary is 475,000 words. So that it means that in our training data, it's highly possible that we don't meet all the n-grams or all the or the big grams, since we have so many unknown words for our in our uh, vocabulary. So if you do the math, we uh, compute that only 0.04 percent of all possible big grams uh, uh, can occur based on our uh, Shakespeare's uh, uh, training set. So that means that it's highly possible that we have unseen uh, engrams. And then we, t we are going to end up having zero probability for many sequences of words because of that. So this real uh, problem uh, needed a solution. And the solution for this problem is called smoothing. So smoothing in general is a technique where we try to transform a bit of how we compute the MLE, the maximum likelihood estimation, so that we don't penalize that hard the, the cases where we have unseen uh, engrams. There are many uh, smoothing techniques already proposed, uh, but here we will see the, the simplest one, which is called Laplace smoothing, or alternatively, the alternative name is add one. So the idea in this uh, Laplace smoothing is that we want to add a very small value to every uh, big gram uh, we, we have in the test uh, set. So, and if you see, this is how, in the end of the slide, this is how we transform the MLE equation uh, using the Laplace smoothing. So we add one in the numerator, and of course, since we add one in every uh, possible engram, we uh, also uh, cope with the denominator as well and we uh, add the size of the vocabulary. So there we end up having a completely different table here. So this is similar to the table we saw a bit before with all the possible uh, n-grams, b-grams we could have from our training set. And here you see that we don't have zeros anymore, but we replace them with one. So this is a way not to penalize too much when we have uh, unseen uh, engrams in, uh, in a training set so that we, the models they can perform uh, a bit better for uh, test cases where they are not exactly the same as the training uh, cases. So that was uh, about engrams in this uh, lecture. So then in the next part of the lecture, we are going to discuss part of speech tagging. <laughs>